Hello everyone, welcome back to day four of our Irish road trip adventure. Today we are leaving Galway, heading south to Cork. Uh, along the way we're going to stop and check out Galway's famous oyster culture. But before we leave, we're making one last stop here in Galway City. When we travel, we love to check out local designers and get, you know, like a local style for ourselves. So fall is coming, it's getting a little bit chilly. So we're going to head over to a place called the Tweed Project. And uh, they're basically taking traditional Irish tweed, reimagining it, and coming up with new styles. So we're gonna go over there and check it out. Just down this way, let's go. Hey, Alex. Hey, Alex. Alex. Hey, nice to meet you. What is the Tweed Project? How did it get started? So I suppose it's um, a commitment to Irish tweed and Irish linen and Irish manufacturing and creating a collection that we both admire in a kind of Margaret Howell way, very classic, and to kind of contemporise um, the nature of Irish fashion. The only thing that has changed is that instead of hand looms, people use electric looms now. It's still the exact same process uh, that it has been for generations. There is a movement in a certain group of people who are admiring small, well-produced um, clothes. Ethical fashion, slow fashion. We want to keep it small, you know, a small little atelier, making beautiful clothes, you know, for, for life. Well, extremely nice ladies, cool shop, and probably one of the prettiest houses I've ever seen. Unfortunately, they were out of the style of scarf that we were going for, but no worries, we're gonna be doing uh, some more design content in Dublin, so hopefully get some style then. For now, it's time to say goodbye to Galway and head down the coast to search for oysters. So we got here, we're at Morin's Oyster Cottage, which is in a 250-year-old thatched house and is the seventh generation of people in the family doing this oyster business. I imagine they do the oyster business right in front of us here. It looks like we're in a big kind of tidal inlet. Mm -hmm. It's called Morin's on the Weir. So we're gonna eat some lunch and then go harvesting some oysters ourselves once the tide drops. Well, you are the seventh generation that's been living and working here, right? That's correct, yeah. So it's, um, it goes back 300 years. Um, it was a pub. It was a house, all in one. So, Michael, what do we have here today? We have the oysters, of course, right beside me here. I'm really excited to have these. We have the seafood special. This dish is, it has a bit of everything. You've got prawns, crab, smoked salmon, the brown bread bakery upstairs, you know, baked fresh every day, wild clams, garlic crab claws, garlic mussels, and steam mussels, you know, just done in a white wine. Very simple, little bay leaf, garlic butter, and uh, that's it. Guys, I'm gonna be completely honest, oysters are not my favorite food, but these look really good, and I'm gonna give it a go. Open mind? Yeah, open mind and open mouth. Exactly. Here we go. Down the hole. Huh? <laughs> wow. That was good, man. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, right? Silence. This is some Galway gluttony. I'm loving it. Absolute destruction. Murder. Mmm. Oh my gosh, that was insanity. Oh. That was one of the most decadent and delicious seafood feasts of my life. So now we're gonna go uh, with Philip, who's the manager here. He's gonna take us over to the nearby oyster beds to see just how this environment makes for such perfect oyster harvesting.
Nice, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. How's it going? Good. Yourself. Nice day for it? Yeah, it's a nice day. It's dry. So what are we looking for today? So we're after uh, going to show you the native oysters here, the native wild uh, flat oyster. We have the Burren to the south, we have Connemara to the north, we have the fields of Atanrai, and the whole lot mixing with the Atlantic coming in. Twice a day, five meters up and five meters down. Take the oysters themselves in and they're filtering up to 11 liters an hour, four or five years to maturity. So filtering 11 liters an hour, you really have the essence of the ocean. So you really have something fantastic when you eat it. We have shipments going to Dubai, to Malaysia, Singapore, and across the other side, then across to Canada. All right, one more for the road, and then we're down to County Cork. Three, two, one. Cheers, guys. Mm. I'm gonna miss this place. Mm -hmm. We're coming back. Okay, so we've just uh, made a beeline from Galway down to Cork County, and we're going to be here for the next three days. Um, Cork County is the birthplace of Ireland's food renaissance. It's big in the slow food movement, and over the next couple of days we're going to explore that. We're starting to, uh, tonight um, in Cork City and exploring more tomorrow as well. Uh, so we're going to go check into the Isaacs Hotel and have dinner tonight at their restaurant. Uh, the green restaurant. We're actually going to have a seven course tasting to be exact of all the local seasonal dishes that they're creating there. Even though we just had a seafood feast, that was a couple hours ago and we've made room for dinner. It's like when um, when we were kids and our parents had my brother, I said, but mom, dad, how are you going to have enough love for both of us? And they go, we just make more room. And I think the same thing for dinner. How are we going to have more room for that second dinner? You just make more room. Just got the cork, pulling up to the Hotel Isaacs right now, and gonna go have dinner at the Green's restaurant by the waterfall. Where do we park is a question. That is a question that I unfortunately right now cannot answer, bro. This is nice. Nice! Oh. Look at that, there is a fat waterfall in the courtyard and the restaurant's right there. Well, this is, this is amazing. We literally have a table in this patio with a waterfall coming right down in the middle of the city. It's a gorgeous location. I'm really excited because Cork is the food capital of Ireland and we're gonna pop the cork right now. Got some Prosecco and an eight course tasting menu. So we just have to forget about all those oysters and clams and mussels we had for lunch and just start feasting anew. I think when we finish this food marathon, we're probably gonna need to run a real marathon, but think about that later. Later. So three wonderful days in County Cork. Oh, it's lunch. It's lunch. Okay, this is uh, a little bit of, it's puma, like foam. Yeah. Foam of what? Lychee, coconut, and milk. Oh, it's like an explosion in your mouth. And cider sauce with a celeriac slaw, a cider jelly, and popcorn scratching. Slowly braised veal. This is a Spanish Rioja Crianza. Oh, Enjoy. that's great. All right. All right. Well, salud. Salud, hermano. Demasiado rico para nosotros. Wait a second. <laughs> that's you. Yeah, that's me. That's great. High five on that. Oh, water so boys. Delicious. Amazing meal. Definitely, we're, we're blown away by the food here in Ireland. We have uh, great produce. 
unbelievable, especially in Cork. Some of the producers, the, the veg they're growing, the meat they're producing is just unbelievable. Yeah, it's really, 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 really good. So you're, like, just, you're very humble though. The ingredients <laughs> are good. But no, it is true. It's, if you buy the best ingredients, uh, it's very easy to really good food. So we're going to go have a nightcap across the street at Sheldon's. Can you join us? Yeah, yeah, why not? Shelburne's. Yeah, Shelburne's. Shelburne, yeah. And we'll get that wrong. So let's go for it. So we've had like a lot of Scotch whiskey, American bourbon. Yeah. Can you tell us what, what makes Irish whiskey Irish whiskey? Irish whiskey. Irish whiskey is special because we make it. Uh, you might notice that in whiskey in Ireland is spelled with me. That's just to di differentiate between everyone else that we're better. The law in Scotland is whiskey has to be in the barrel for three years. In Ireland it's three years and one day just to show that we do a little bit more. Irish whiskey is generally triple distilled. Uh, we don't, we're not as peaty as the Scotch. Irish whiskey is a lot more accessible to um, to tourists to drink. I think they're a lot smoother, um, not tastier whiskies in general. <laughs> is it true you guys have a 96 or 100 oh, something? I think at the moment I have 110 different Irish whiskies. Have you had them all? I actually am the only person to have them all. No way. Yeah, I How's your liver doing? My liver is okay. Yeah, <laughs> I, have to, I, I space them out. I don't drink all the time, but when I do, I, I do like my drop of whiskey. You grew that mustache from drinking a hundred something whiskeys? <laughs> that's, that's the only reason I have my mustache is because of whiskey. Well, it's been a really insane, decadent day, and uh, it's fun. We're going to have to sign it out because you if not... We whiskey drink. We yeah, whiskey drink. We so, do. Guys, if you like the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, share with your friends, and subscribe to Bagger Brothers for travel videos every Tuesday and Thursday. And we'll see you guys tomorrow. Food tour of Cork. In the meantime, remember to stay curious, keep exploring, and we'll see you guys on the road. Salancha. Cheers. The late 1800s. This was built in the late 1700s.